Hello and welcome to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about High Plains Drifter, a nihilistic and to my mind deeply repellent 1973 western. Content warnings apply on this one for rape, violence and torture, all of which are perpetrated by the protagonist of the film. Uh, if that puts you off and puts me off, frankly. I encourage you to quit the video now. Uh, I definitely wouldn't blame you for minimising the time you spend on this movie. In any case, as the film begins, a mysterious unnamed stranger rides out of the desert into the isolated mining town of Lego in the American Old West. Upon his arrival, three gunmen who have been hired by the town to protect from outlaws taunt and threaten him. His response is to kill all three with little effort. When attractive townswoman Callie Travers then flirtatiously insults him, he rapes her. Um, nobody does anything about the murders or the rape, mind you. Instead, the next day, town officials offer the stranger anything he wants to protect the town from a band of outlaws who will soon be released from prison. It's gradually revealed that the townspeople hired the outlaws to murder their former sheriff to cover up their own crimes, then betrayed the outlaws to the law in order to avoid paying them. So you may well be thinking at this point, wow, it sounds like these people have what's coming to them. And while the stranger agrees to take the job, he clearly feels similarly. He bullies and harasses the townsfolk, even doing a bit more killing and raping in the process, before the film's climactic, effectively three-sided showdown. The outlaws versus the town, and the stranger versus them both. So, I might, and in fact have, also summarised this film as follows. A town of repugnant human beings hire a reprehensible human being to protect them from a trio of repulsive human beings. A cartload of people die in the process, and not a one of them doesn't leave the world a better place by no longer being in it. Um, yeah. The central thesis of this film appears to be that pretty much everyone in the world is a worthless piece of scum, and that the only thing that elevates any of us is that we might be a bit more selective or effective in our brutality than the people around us. Uh, in other words, this is a hundred minutes of jerks being jerks to each other, often with fatal consequences. I found it a thoroughly unpleasant experience, um, so don't expect a balanced or nuanced assessment here. Uh, I actively resent the loss of the time I spent watching this movie, and if I'm going to spend yet more time talking about it, I'm not going to hold back about that fact. And with that out of the way, let's dig into this steaming pile. So I'm forced to say that if I squint really hard, I can see why Clint Eastwood was sufficiently interested in this project to write and direct the film. Um, he had pretty much built his cinema stardom on playing deadly, nameless strangers who drift into town and shoot up the bad guys. Reading a film treatment about a deadly, nameless stranger who drifts into a town where pretty much everyone is the bad guy, up to and including the stranger himself, probably seemed like an interesting subversion of his own famous roles. Now, the arrival of the stranger is not a sign that things are about to get better, but instead that they are about to reach their apoc apocalyptic ending. And I think that with the right script, this premise might have made for an interesting movie, but this is not that script. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it instantly tumbles headfirst into the obvious problem that faces a movie where everyone is a villain. Why should I want to spend any time with any of these people? The High Plane Drifter's only answer seems to be, so you can finally see them get their just desserts, which is not enough. Now, there are ways to make villainous characters entertaining or even likeable. They can have a clever sense of humour, they can show glimmers of humanity through their relationships with their loved ones, they can even simply be magnificent bastards. I mean, you know, Emperor Palpatine is pretty much entirely bereft of any positive character traits such as mercy, and what little we see of his sense of humour is harsh and cruel, but he's still a memorable and evocative villain that we love to hate. High Plains Drifter has no such villains. Instead, the town of Lego is populated entirely by petty, small, weak characters. People who have wandered into villainy not from any particular ambition or goal, but simply because they always took the selfish, looks to be the easiest option, route out of any situation. They're evil simply because they lack either courage or compassion. They're not even capable of being thugs, because thugs might actually have some measure of physical bravery, even if they entirely lack any moral courage. These people are parasites and scum, worse even than the outlaws they fear. Now, it's true that this makes it easy to want to see bad things happen to the townsfolk, but it also means that the wait for those bad things to happen is an excruciating one. My single biggest bugbear with the film, though, is its treatment of rape. The script has the stranger rape two different women during the course of the film, and in neither case is this depicted as a foul or repellent act. Uh, in fact, in the first rape, the woman is shown to be quickly enjoying the experience, 
that doesn't happen. While in the second, the woman's response the morning after is to deliver plot exposition to the stranger, uh, which implies that she too bears him no ill will for the assault. Uh, in doing this, the film actively excuses and endorses what is frankly vile behaviour by the main character. This is straight up rape apologia. Now I avoid swearing in these videos, which franks me with very little that I can actually safely say about my opinions of these scenes. Little that is, except that they're disgusting, repellent, dangerous and reprehensible, and everyone involved should be ashamed. Even if the rest of the film were gold star entertainment, I would loathe High Plains Drifter for its portrayal of these two scenes. Stay far, far away from this film. Next time, after High Plains Drifter, I could do with something more pleasant to talk about. So let's take a look at Pixar's 2004 offering, The Incredibles. But that's next time. Uh, until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.